Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2Design. In this short tip video, I will show you how you can export an accurate Z-Pass in Blender, meaning that it will be with anti-aliasing and a real depth information. To illustrate the process, I have built this scene, which is very simple. It's just uh, some pillars to get a nice depth. And whenever I render it, I get this here. So this is the basic render. I have used transparency in the rendering option in film here and I have outputted a few passes for this first one the Z pass for sure the mist just to show you and a basic combine with alpha so one of the first problem whenever we have a look at the Z pass by default here is that it's very sharp on the edge here. We have very sharp pixels that we don't want necessarily whenever we want to make post-production in another software. We would prefer to have something smoother like on the combine here. Also, the second thing is that we can't save uh, this Z-Pass as a picture by default. And what we want is to be able to source the Z information I can check in the corner of the screen here. So the general workaround is to use in the node editor or using the layers is to uh, use a normalized node that we will find in vector normalized. So what it does is that it will uh, take the lowest value of the Z pass and the highest value of the z pass and it will set a range of values that goes from 0 to 1 so that we can use this to mix a black and white color so if i go into color mix and i set this one to pure black and use the output here i will be able to get it in the viewer so to get it in my UE image editor i don't like to use the backdrop here I will switch here to viewer node. To see it, I need to switch back to RGB and alpha here. And I get uh, something that looks like my Z pass. But there are two problems. I didn't got rid of uh, this uh, crispy edge here. And also, I have lost the real depth information, meaning that Whatever the distance of the hallway I have here, Blender will convert the shortest to the farther distance from 0 to 1. So let's say you are compositing an animation where the camera is moving forward like this. It will make your depth of field wrong because you will always have a value from 0 to 1 here. Even if you go further like this. The Z-Pass information should be based on distance, none on values of pixels. And this is the problem we have with normalizing it. At the beginning, we have a distance of 0 to 50. And when I've done my traveling here, I got a distance from 0 to 15. And my Z-Pass range of pixel was always set from 0 to 1, so I will sure I've bug with any defocus or stuff like this. So a way in those case is to use the mist pass, which is nice and clean. So you just have to set the mist length whenever you activate mist here. In the world option, I just need to input a start and an end value. So currently, I just enter the start value, which is from the camera to those 60 blender unit, which are further away here, so that I get a nice miss pass. So as soon as we are above 60 blender unit, it becomes purely white. But the problem here is that I don't have a clear depth information. And also the mist 
may give you some information of A. So it's really nice to create fogs and stuff like this, but whenever you are really working onto a clean uh, depth of field information, this is not good. I found another solution to get a smooth result and to keep the Z information of any picture and to be able to export it in a way in After Effects or Photoshop. And I have this layer I have created, so you can add a layer by clicking the plus button here. And I folded Z pass. And in this Z pass, I am using here a special material. It means that whenever you add this kind of information here, Blender will give this material by default to everything in the scene. So everything is using this Z depth material right now. And this material is currently stored into this cube. And how does this shader work? It's very, very simple. So I will go to the node editor here and switch back to material. And I will decompose it with you. So we have light path node here that we can get into inputs, light path. And I'm dividing the ray length, so currently the length of the ray thrown by the camera, by the camera ray, which are currently, whenever there is a ray of the camera that is thrown, Blender will calculate the length. So I, I get this very uh, crispy and white result here. It's because we are inputting into the emission shader color, a color with a very high value. So we remember that our distance was between 0 and 50. So currently we have a color with a value that goes from 0 to 50. And so Blender translates it with a very white and crispy um, color. And it can't smooth the outside. So one important thing is that if you want to get a uh, correct result and export correctly the information, you have to make sure you're not clumping your colors and also that you are using the default color management because the filmic, uh, whenever it's awesome as L, will dial down the output. So then to be able to control those values, we just need to divide them by something. And if we divide them by 50, we will get a value that will go from 0 to 1. But this won't be normalized. This will be based onto a distance. So the closest pixel in my scene were not with a value of 0, because they are at 15 uh, Blender units from the camera, because the camera is floating. So currently, this gray ball here won't have a pure value of zero. So when we render this and have a look, we can see that we have a nice picture with anti-aliasing, so it's nice and clean. And the values, whenever I will click and over over my picture, I will be able to see that the depth value, the Z value, is the same as the RGB values multiplied by 50 by the factor we have used meaning that the closer the further the mid distance are correct they are just reduced or divided by 50 but then i just have to multiply those value by 50 to get the correct depth value which wasn't possible using the normalized node with the classic z pass you will have uh, crispy edges and the values will be wrong while here we have correct values so i'll be now able to launch a little render enabling both layers the first is our uh, basic sun the second one is our z pass layer and then we'll see how we can mix it with the defocus once the rendering done i can go into the node editor and make some compositing so I will use a filter defocus and I will first edit my picture using the classical way with the Z depth. Then we can use 
the distance value in the camera to change the focal point onto our compositing, which is pretty nice because you can even do the compositing into a new Blender file. The only thing you have to do is create a camera and give it a distance and it will modify uh, the focal point onto your compositing. You can also source an object in the scene as being the focus of the camera, like Susan here. And you can see on the compositing it looks great. So now I will duplicate the render layer and load the second render layer which is our ZPass render layer in the node editor. And then we'll try to output our pixelized and generated uh, picture as a ZPass and see if we get kind of the same result or the same result. So let's load the ZPass. It looks like this. So if I use it in the Z, it won't be correct because it's divided by 50. So the first thing I have to do is to multiply its value by 50 using a converter math node set to multiply and 50. And the second problem I will have is that this picture has an alpha. So we'll need to make its background purely white, meaning that it will have a distance that is uh, infinity. Currently, a distance over 50. So if I multiply, multiply sorry, 1 by 50, that should be correct. So I just need to use an alpha over wi with my render layer before I multiply the value, and that should be OK. Now, if we compare both filter with the uh, Z depth and our pixelized Z depth, I don't think we clearly see a difference. There is a small difference, but it's very hard to tell. So now if you want to output or save those pictures as PNG, for example, when you are rendering an animation, you can add an output file output, plug in and create as many output as you want, give a path, give a name, and it will allow you to automatically save your file as in the format specified uh, above. A final thing is that the best way to get a clear, a nice and an accurate blur in Blender is to use the blur while rendering directly onto the camera uh, information. So if you reduce the f-stop and increase slightly the um, the rotation which is your blur amount in a way you will have I don't know to say it but a real uh, calculated blur and there is a thing is that many people use this uh, to render the scene and I more and more uh, do it this way but the problem is that the original Z pass is very messy when you are using this, while our new Z pass is very clean. So we have solved the problem of having sharp edges, and now we have an anti-aliased result. We have real depth information that we don't have using the mist, and when we are using uh, the blur during a render. We have a nice blurred Z pass that we can compose in Blender or any other post production software. So I think it's a pretty nice and accurate way to output a Z pass. And since it's a very old topic, I hope this answer will be uh, welcome. So I'm sorry I haven't recorded any tutorial for a while, that's a bit complicated. Uh, lately I have a lot of work, but uh, I hope to see you soon and I'm still recording the rigging course. So stay tuned.